In today's tutorial, I'll show you 10 blues guitar licks that will get you over every chord of a jazz blues in G. Hi, my dear jazz blues guitar aficionados around the globe. Sandra Sherman here. Greetings from Austria. I'll show you each lick note for note, slow and easy, and there is also a slow tempo playthrough of each of the licks. I'm also going to be showing you what musical tools I use to create these licks. I've made tabs and backing tracks and as a bonus the tabs include an entire blue solo using the licks from this lesson. All this fun is available from the links down below in this uh, in the video description box and please read the short download instructions next to these links. All right, now let's get some jazz blues guitar licks under our fingers. What can we play on the G7 chord? I have a couple tools here. On a blues we can play the G minor pentatonic, of course. Guess you all know that one. The G major pentatonic. The G mixolydian scale. And you need to know the G7 arpeggio. So the chord tones of this chord. because that's what I usually stick to. That and in this case a mixture to, uh, with the uh, minor pentatonic. I start on the flat third of the chord. Here is the major third and I start on the flat third. That's a typical blues thing to do. I hammer on, quick hammer from the third fret of the G string to the fourth. You gotta know where your thirds are on the fretboard so you can always do this blues trick. Then I go uh, to the 5 of the G and down to the 5 of the D. The blues trick again and back to the 5 of the D. So that's the first part of the lick. That's a lick on its, in its own right actually. And now I climb up the mixolydian scale or actually I think more of the uh, arpeggio. This is what I think this accept of the arpeggio and I throw in chromatic so third of the D four five and and sorry going over via the uh, flat third to the major third again three to four then up the arpeggio third of the B sixth of the B and now the mixolydian I, do, I play a little bebop like this, is, this tone is from the Mixolydian scale, 5, pulling off to 4, the chromatic, 5 of uh, B, that's a 13 of the uh, Mixolydian scale, or the 6, and 2 chord tones, the root on the 3rd of the E string and the 7th on the 6th of the B string. So, and I'll play this all in triplets. Except for the last two. And now let's listen to that at slow tempo with the play along. Let's move things up a bit the fretboard. We're still on G7. This time I play up here. Here's a G7, 10, 9, 10, 8. I think this chord and G9. Alright? And of course I can play my minor pentatonic, major pentatonic, mixolydian plus the arpeggio. I actually just think more chords than scales, okay? So Again, I start with my slide from the flat third to the major third. This time this is 8 of D to the 9th of the D string. 
You gotta know where your thirds are so you can do this trick. We had one here, we had one here now, and there's another one up here. It will appear in this lick later. All right, so we start on this one. Then I go to the root, eight of the B string, that's a G. So I played basically these two notes, the B and the G. And that makes for a sixth in the vol. That's so cool, really bluesy. Now I go to the ninth of the chord, which is the tenth of the B string. Chromatically down, pull off to the root again. Now I play a little around the mixolydian scale. Actually, I think more, I see this chord, okay? So what I play these tones and I play around them. I go to the ninth of the G string now, then the tenth, which is a chord tone, the tenth of the B, which is uh, a G, the ninth, also a chord tone, the ninth actually. And then I go up to the fifth of the chord, that's the tenth of the E string. All right. All right, gotta roll over. Now, second bar, this is the first beat of the second bar. And I play my flat to major third again, six to seven. Oh, sorry. Then I go down an arpeggio, the G arpeggio actually. And I have a little rest here and that makes the phrasing sound really bluesy. One and two triplet. Now I play the tenth of the G string, which is the seventh of the chord. See, I always see chords in front of me. And I do a little smear bend. We can do that whenever, when we're on the seventh of the chord. This is the seventh of the chord or the flat third of the chord. The flat third, we can always smear bend, but I usually kind of slide it into it, okay? That was our blues trick. Now for the seventh, I don't slide into anything because that would make it a major seventh, which doesn't belong to the chord. But it is a blues habit to kind of smear bend that towards the major seven. We will never play the major seven, we just smear bend it upwards or downward. It's just a quarter note, right? And going back to the root, that's the eight of the B string. So here is the thing at slow tempo. Yay. And now let's listen to that uh, at slow tempo with the play along. Here is the fourth degree of the scale. This is the C7. We're back down here. Here is a C7 chord. And this is what I focus on mostly. I also use the uh, C mixolydian scale. And I have to know, of course, where my third of the chord is, of the scale is here. And I can slide into it from the minor third. Our old trick. And that's exactly what I do here. Slide from E flat to E, four to five. Go to the uh, third of the E, fifth of the E, fifth to sixth fret slide, back to five, and then a triplet, three, five of the B string and three of the G string. Gotta be real fast here, real quick. All right, and this is just actually the chord. Chord tone, chord tone, mixolydian scale. Chord tone, this is the seventh, C7. See, I always see chords everywhere on the fretboard. Back to a mixolydian tone and back to just playing the chord in reverse, descending. All right, here is the entire lick at slow tempo with the playback. And here's 
here's another C7 lick for you, a little further up the neck, not much though. We were here, now we are here. And I, I'm thinking C minor pentatonic this time. This is this friend here. And I have, this is a pretty cool lick actually. I play the C and the G, which is the root and the fifth of the chord, and I hammer to the D flat. That's not the blue note. It is just uh, a chromatic tone. I, I hit both strings and I hammer to the sixth of the G string and I pull off again. Then you have to do a little stretch with your ring finger to the eighth fret of the D string. That's the B flat, which is the seventh of the chord. Then back to those two, these two. Back to the eighth fret. And then five of D, eight of A, and five of D again. And we start on one end, that's pretty cool. One, ah, sorry, should have hit both notes. One, and again we have that uh, little rest. Four, that makes so much for uh, bluesy uh, phrasing. So just think in triplets, triplet, triplet, and let the first go. Don't play it. Have a rest. Triplet. And this is the one of the next chord. Now let's hear that at slow tempo with the play along. Now in a jazz blues, the second bar of the fourth degree, the C7, is usually played a half tone higher as a diminished chord, which means C sharp diminished. All right, that's a distinct sound. And I have this chord here, C sharp diminished, six, seven, uh, uh, sorry, four, five, three, five. And all I do is I play an arpeggio, and that's quite simple. I I start from the ring finger, that's the fifth fret <coughs> of the D string, and then you just play minor thirds, because a diminished chord consists only of minor thirds. A minor third is always either three to the right or two to the left on the next string, except when the B string uh, stops that behavior. <laughs> All right, so five, three of the G, three to the right makes the six of the G. Now it would be two to the left on the next string, but the B string gives us only one to the left. That's the five and three and six. Now, in order to make a cool phrasing, I start ag again, I start on the one and, and then I kind of catch up by playing a triplet on count two. So it's one and triplet. That's a cool phrasing. You should memorize that. One and triplet. One. All right, let's hear that at slow tempo. Now for the sixth chord, the sixth chord in the G blues is the E altered, like this E7 sharp nine, but actually we're down here, so I focus on this regular E7 chord. You could make it an altered chord by shifting the, uh, the five to the sharp five. Anyway, I start the altered scale from the G sharp, the third of the chord, and I go it down backwards, F, E, D. I make a pull off here to C, A flat or G sharp, to G, 
F. And now my resolution for the A minor chord is the E. And I always tend to uh, resolve from a half tone above or below. That's the best resolution. By the way, I have a tutorial, actually two, on the altered scale. One is the theory, so you understand the theory, and one is just licks in the altered scale. How cool is that? Now let's check out this lick at slow tempo. Let's move the E altered chord up a bit. I have my E7 here actually on the seventh fret. Just regular cowboy chord, there's nothing altered about it, but this is my reference so I see where things are, where the chord tones are. And we play, I'm gonna show you Joe Paslik now, and he uses the A harmonic minor scale or E Phrygian dominant scale. Hmm, sounds weird, huh? <coughs> so uh, I start from the flat 6 of the uh, E7 chord and, and that's the 10th uh, fret of the D string. I go to the 7th of the G string, that's the 7th, right? Oops. Between those two I have a triplet. 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 Then I go down the scale, the 9th fret of the D, the 7th fret of the D. Sliding into the 6th fret, which is the 3rd of the chord, right? Here's another E7 chord. Stretching all over to the 10th uh, fret of the G string. That's an F, it's the flat 9. It's an alto tone. To the 7th of the chord, that's the 9th of the G string. And the 7th of the G. And the resolution, this time is a whole tone down, which is the same tone as this. And that's the, th the 10th fret of the D string, by the way, and it's the third of the A minor chord. That's actually a C major supreme position, but here, right? So um, here is the whole uh, lick at slow tempo for you. the 2-5 progression, that's the A minor to the D altered, I alter it. You can actually also not alter it and play a D9, I usually alter it going to D7 sharp 9 or flat 9, which leads me better back to G7. All right, uh, for A minor we use the A Dorian scale. And for D, we use the D altered scale, all right? So let's start with the Dorian uh, measure. I start on the um, E, that's the second of the D string, and it's the fifth of the chord, right? It's a chord tone. I go up to the uh, five of G, four, two, I go down the scale. Further down the scale, five of D. And now I want to enclose uh, this F sharp, all right? This is what I already look at when I, because I want to go to the D7. That's the third of the D7. So what I do is I do an enclosure, which is a typical jazz thing to do. I start above the target tone. I go down scale tone, fill in a chromatic to get there right in time on beat one, right? So here's the A minor line. 
actually slide into that F sharp. And now I'm on D7, right? And I play, um, that's actually a Charlie Parker line. F sharp to the flat line of the chord. I have this chord in mind. F sharp, fourth fret, and the fourth fret of the B string. Going to the third fret. Five of G, three of G, four to three, six of A, and now the resolution for the G chord, that's the fifth of the G chord, is the f also the fifth of the A string, right? That's a D altered lick, resolving into the fifth of the G chord. Let's hear it at slow tempo with the play along. Since we can never have enough 2-5-1 lines, here is another one this time up the fretboard. I believe it's a Charlie Parker line from Donnelly or Blues for Alice, I'm not sure. So um, A Dorian, or I don't actually think A Dorian, I think uh, superimposition. If you don't know what a superimposition is, please check my video on superimpositions, I think, over minor chords. So uh, this is one of, of those lines where we play another, a different arpeggio than the root one. So over A minor, I don't play A minor, I play the C major. That's a superimposition. And we have one here, C, E, G, B, 10, 9, 8, 7, of the upper four strings. And then I already have in mind the chord that follows D7. I want to go here. So what I do is I enclose it by going up a scale tone, chromatic above, chromatic, which is a scale tone too, below, and then I hammer to that scale tone. 10, 9, 7, 8 of the E string, and this is my target tone for D7. And here is that the Parker altered lick. 8 of E, 8 of uh, G, 9 of G, 7 of E, slide it down to uh, 6, and the middle finger goes over the 7 and 7 of the B and G strings. Alright? Stretch over to the 10th of the e, uh, D string. That's the D altered line. Resolution, 9 of D and 8 of uh, B, that's part of the G7 chord, right? Let's listen at slow tempo. And here are the last two bars of a blues, and it's called the turnaround. This is a 1-6-2-5 progression that leads us back to the first chord, the one chord. All right, so I start up here on a G7, and I'm thinking almost only chord tones. I play the third of the chord, which is the ninth of the D string, then the seventh of the G string, which is the fifth of the chord. Arpeggio. 9, 7, 10, that's the seventh of the chord, and the eight of the B string is the root. Now it's for the E7 because we have half bar changes. I go down here 
and I see this chord. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong chord. This one, E7 flat nine. I see the flat nine, which is a um, F, an F. Go down to the root, six five. The D, which is the seventh of the chord, seventh fret also. And the uh, B, which is the fifth of the chord. And I slide into the C, which is the third of the A minor chord. See, it's only chord tones. Flat nine, I consider that a chord tone when we're in an altered, on an altered chord. Flat nine, E, D, B. And now for the A minor. And this time I play, this is also a Parker line. This one next. So, going to A, the root, chromatic. This is the seventh of the chord, fifth of the D string. Sliding into the third of the D7, that's the F sharp on the fourth fret of the D string. And I play an arpeggio. F sharp, A, D, uh, sorry, C, D. And the resolution, 4 of G, that's the third of the G7, and it's root, the G. Alright, let's check that at slow tempo. into blues I have an entire blues playlist up here on my YouTube channel you may want to check it out if you like this video please give it a fair thumbs up please don't forget to subscribe my channel share the love and the knowledge and I see you next week Servus, Baba.